From BBC Two Wales and BBC HD, a contentious issue for Gardener's World. It might not seem the most inspiring of landscapes, but in the ground beneath my boots are 10,000 years of history, the protection of which a great many people are extremely passionate about. And you know, they blame gardeners like you and me for this happening to it. And seeing as nigh on 70% of all horticultural peat is used by amateur gardeners, well, maybe we are to blame. But should I care? Should you care? Go to any garden centre and you see dozens of different composts, the bulk of which contain peat. Now peat is the composted remains of sphagnum moss and gardeners like me have been struggling to find a worthy replacement for years. Some say peat bogs are Britain's tropical rainforests. Well, in my view, their beauty is more modest, but environmentalists argue they're precious for three reasons. Reason number one, the habitat. Advocate for reason number one is Dr Ollie Watts, the RSPB's peatland policy officer. He's been at the forefront of their campaign to protect peat bog habitats for more than 20 years and believes the RSPB has a moral responsibility to lead the campaign. But on a rainy day, on a bog, it's a hard sell. The archaeology. Advocate for reason number two is Dr Jenny Stopford, an archaeologist for English heritage in the north of England. On her patch in 1984, the naturally preserved remains of a man were pulled out of a peat bog. He's become known as Lindo Man, after the name of the common near Manchester, where he was found. He... That very neatly brings us on to reason number three. Peat bogs have the ability to control our climate because they lock away vast amounts of carbon. If we destroyed all the peat bogs on the planet, we would double the rate of global warming. Advocate for reason number three is Professor Chris Freeman, award-winning scientist from Bangor University. He's dedicated many years of his life to researching the biogeochemical qualities of peatlands. This area of peatland that we can see around us, I would say, is probably the most important ecosystem on the planet. And the, the reason is that it stores huge amounts of carbon dioxide. The way it does that is by the plants here are all soaking up carbon dioxide and in a way that's the same as plants anywhere but the difference here is that in the soil there is this brown coloured chemical. That is down to these chemicals called phenolic compounds, they're a bit like artificial preservatives in, in foods that we buy down the supermarket but instead of keeping things fresh for like a couple of weeks, these things can keep things fresh for thousands of years without decomposing. And we can see that if we just look under the surface. If we look at the state of some of the vegetation here. That's been down here for years, but it's hardly decomposed or rotted away at all. And that is the way carbon dioxide gets locked up. It's because the plants take up the CO2, but then when the plants die, they don't re-release that CO2 back to the atmosphere. Chris has a simple experiment which shows that this is true. He collects two samples of matter from the bog, he squeezes the liquid out of one, effectively draining it, just as happens when peat is extracted, but the second he leaves alone and takes them back to the lab. Chris's assistant extracts gas from both the wet and dry samples before putting them into a machine full of liquid nitrogen which will then measure the amount of carbon dioxide they contain. The results are soon available on the computer screen. Okay, so what we're looking at here is this is the area where the carbon dioxide is shown and we're looking at the drained peat sample and you can see there's a large amount of carbon dioxide being given off this sample where we've drained all the water away. But if we compare that with 
the peat that stayed wet, look at the difference there. If we'd left that peat intact, we would have been able to keep all that carbon dioxide locked up in our peatlands. That's exactly what we want, really, with the, the problems we're experiencing at the moment with global warming. There are peat cutting companies that are actually going out there and restoring some of these peatlands after they've extracted the peat. The only problem there is that all of the carbon dioxide that was previously locked up for thousands of years has been released back to the atmosphere and it would literally take thousands of years to get them back again. I think us gardeners are blissfully ignorant of the reasons why conservationists are so passionate about peatland habitats and that they blame us for their destruction. 